not often that you can be transported a half a world away through the power of music. But that's exactly what you'll find at this weekend's performance by the South Dakota Symphony Orchestra. And the destination this week is China. I recently sat in on a rehearsal with music director Delta David Geyer to find out more about what you will hear from Daphnis and Chloe and the music of Joe Long. Thank you so much for having me out here. I'm glad to be joining you in your home this time to be able to hear this beautiful music. But let's talk about the concert coming up. One of your big pieces is the, um, Clo what is it? Daphnis and Chloe. Daphnis and Chloe, yep, I had that for a while. One of your pieces is Daphnis and Chloe. Talk to me about that piece a little bit. Well, this is a piece by Maurice Ravel, and uh, it is maybe the, the, the most representative piece of Impressionist, French Impressionism in music. So if you ever looked at a Monet and wondered, what would that sound like? It's probably Daphnis and Chloe. Who hasn't looked at a Monet and wondered what it would sound like? Well, I, I'm, I'm guessing a few people maybe that didn't cross their mind, but you know. <laughs> I think that's a great visual, though, of what we're going to be hearing. But this is also going to be special because you have a few dancers joining you as well. Yes, we have a Daphnis and a Chloe from Lyra Dance Company, and that not the whole ba the whole ballet, not the whole piece, but at certain moments they will appear on stage and dance. So you'll be doing the entire ballet. Yes, it's about an hour long. Yeah, with sort of those dancers intermixed when when they can do that. Exactly. Right. That sounds amazing, but I'm also really intrigued by your other piece. You have a piece by Joe Long, and he is visiting here now to guide you through this piece. Tell me a little bit about Joe and what makes him so special. So Joe Long is the first Chinese American to win a Pulitzer Prize, and he won uh, for a piece of music he wrote about 10 years ago. Um, and this piece that we're playing of his is uh, very unique. It's a concerto for string quartet and orchestra. So the, the string quartet, our principal quartet, the Dakota Quartet, um, is are actually featured in front of the orchestra as as soloists. And and he's it's called Poems from Tang. So these are this is the Tang Dynasty. So he's actually during the performance going to read the poem that inspired each movement in Chinese, and we'll have English uh, translations and supertitle. And uh, then so it'll be four movements and four four poems, back and forth. And then um, then we'll get to sample uh, some of these very interesting sounds that he's created in order to uh, represent his Chinese heritage through the music that he writes. So what makes these sounds so interesting or, or unique and are your musicians having to maybe learn a few new techniques to sort of mimic those sounds? Yeah, there are a few curveballs, I would say, that he throws uh, uh, to Western classical musicians because he's actually writing for, you know, a traditional symphony orchestra, but um, trying to get them to imitate um, these ancient Chinese instruments. So there are several techniques that are required, uh, different pluckings of the instrument, hitting the sides of the instrument in a sort of percussive way, uh, sliding the pitch and things that, that will uh, make it sound actually quite Chinese. So let's give our viewers a little bit of a sampling of, of that, just so they know to be looking for some of those different techniques when they enjoy the whole piece. Terrific, here's the Dakota String Quartet. That was really interesting. I could see, I could see that they were using their hand on the cello and plucking in different areas with their mm -hmm. fingers, and that's really representing those different instruments that we don't have here to play now, right? Correct. Yeah. So, has it been fun for everybody to learn these new techniques and get to know the composer? I think so, yes, and the composer heard them play it this morning and gave them a big thumbs up, and so everybody's pretty excited to go into the weekend. Thumbs up's always a good sign. Yeah, absolutely. And I think now we have a little bit more of a sense of what we're looking for, but you have a little bit longer excerpt that we can hear. Tell me what that's all about. So this is an excerpt from the second movement, which is called The Old Fisherman, uh, the song of the chin, and the chin is a zither. It's a seven-string instrument, which is plucked, and so we'll hear that excerpt. Thank you. 